Hello everyone and welcome to yet another episode of Japanese for Morons, uh, starring me, Victory, this time. And uh, today, just like the last time, I'm going to talk about some Japanese grammar. But before I do that, I would like to take a second to thank all the people who watched and commented on my last video on Japanese for Morons. Thank you so much for all your positive comments and that really made my day and my week. So thank you so much. And uh, thanks to Give Me a Break Man for once again having me on his show. Ah, that's the introduction. I'm going to try to make this video shorter. I know, I, I know the last one was a bit, was a bit long. So yeah. But, but yeah, we're going to talk about grammar, and this time we're going to talk about negative conjugation. And uh, we're not going to talk about how to conjugate a verb into negative. Instead, I'm going to introduce to you some different ways of doing so, so that you may spice up your language. Um, I have three different ways that you hopefully don't already know. Hmm. Yeah, let's get started. The first one, and uh, we will need an example verb to exemplify this, and let's not use tabudu this time because it is the most boring verb that is in the world, and with diets being so popular, who eats anyway? So let's use another verb, wakaru, which means to understand. So, yeah, we all know the standard, uh, what, what's it called, formal way? Wakarimas, to understand. Wakarimasen, don't understand. And then there is the informal or colloquial or casual, I don't know what you call it. Wakaru, understand. Wakaranai, don't understand. Those are the ones that everyone uses and everyone knows. But yeah, there are different ones. There are alternative ways to doing so. So yeah, I'm going to talk about those. The first one is wakaran. And remember, this is a, a grammar. This goes for any verb. But anyway, what you do is you take a verb and it's informal, negative, then you remove the nai and you add m in. So wakara nai becomes wakara m. One more time. Wakara nai, nai, bye bye. And m. Wakara m. And uh, yeah, it means the same basically. Um, so that's, that's a different way to make a negative conjugation. Pretty cool. And as I said, you can use, you can do this with any verb. You can also say uh, shiran or ikan, um, to not know and not go, which rhymes in both languages. Pretty cool. So yeah, that's the first one. The second one is the z conjugation. That's what I call it. And um, what you do again is you remove the nai part of the of the uh, informal negative verb. So, wakara nai becomes wakara z. So, yeah, that's the second one. And this one is often used with the particle ni, meaning without something something. For example, tabezu ni gako ni kimashita. That was a bit of a bad example, but go to school without eating. The last one, I'm sorry if I'm going too fast here, but I'm really trying to make this video not too long. Um, that is the nu. And um, once again, you say bye bye to the nai, and this time you add nu. I don't know if it. Nu. So, wakara nai becomes wakara nu. So, yeah, that was pretty fast. That, those are the three different conjugations that I wanted to introduce today. And um, yeah, so just to summarize all the different ways that you, you or you can also say wakanai, but I think that's an exception. I don't know if you know that. Please write it in the comments. I I don't know if that's an exception. If you can do that with other verbs, I've never heard it said with any other verbs. Can't remember how. So yeah, we have wakaru, which can become wakarimasen, wakaranai, wakaran, wakarazu, wakaranu which all means don't understand. Don't you understand that? If you don't understand that, rewind. <laughs> and watch the video in slow motion. <laughs> ah, let's look at the camera. That was pretty fast this time. Nice. 
So yeah, I think I have time to make a few example sentences that you can use in real life. Oh, let's come up with something. Hmm. I will not allow that perverted stuff. Something along those lines. Kamisama I, I killed that super crazy strong ninja without using the special banana blade that I received from God. And I did that. That's, that's a true story. Iwanu ga hana. And which means some things are better left unsaid. And uh, yeah. Hey, uh, on my way home, I was just thinking about more examples uh, where these, these alternative conjugations are used. And uh, I came up with two that I would like to share with you. Uh, these you have probably heard before, but maybe you didn't know that they were con they were constructed using these alternative negative conjugation rules. Uh, the first one is suman, which means I'm sorry, uh, excuse me, and um, this comes from the uh, the word sumimasen. And if you were to say that in uh, the formal or informal way, that would be sumanai. And if you were to use the first negative alternative conjugation that I had talked about earlier, that would become suman, because you remove the nai part and you add n. So, sumimasen becomes suman. That's nice, that's cool, that's different, that's, um, yeah, different, makes the language more exciting. And uh, another example is gamantikin, which means I can't take it no more, I've had enough. And uh, this, of course, comes from gamantikinai, or uh, gamantikimasen. But just to spice it up, they've used, uh, many people use this alternative negative conjugation and it becomes gaman dikin. Once again, dikinai, remove nai and n, diki n, gaman dikin. So yeah, that's about it. I hope that you find this uh, useful. I hope that you will use it as much as you can and spice up your language, make it more exciting. I should, get home. I should go home now and um, do my homework. So, mada itsuka!